Cause I got something to prove I gotta take what I hate and finally make a move I think of you and all the shit you don't do What's up, wrestling trading card fans? Welcome to our edition of WTC TV, and I'm joined once again with Paul and I'm from the Wrestling Card Price Guide. How are you, sir? I'm good. Happy WrestleMania weekend, sir. Happy WrestleMania, everybody. We're Sunday morning. We just went through uh, night one last night, which was a blast. Did you get to see any of it? I haven't watched any WrestleManias in a few years. Oh wow, wow! Let me tell you, <laughs> let me tell you what happened. Cody Rhodes showed up, which was. Uh, which I got was the highlights because people like to spoil yeah. that stuff on Twitter, and I'm still on Twitter, so I got to see all the highlights. Oh, well, the WrestleManias are the ones that we obviously watch live with a group of people, but I was kind of nervous about that—that that they were going to maybe like try to Shane McMahon or Cesaro or something. So I'm pleased that Cody actually showed up, and the main event with Stone Cold Steve Austin. It wasn't just like a bit of jaw jacking and one stunner; like they went for quite a while. So uh, that was fun to see. And uh, probably the match of the night for me was um, was Becky and Bianca Belair. Bianca beat Becky for the title and uh, a great match. So I'm looking forward to night two tonight. Yeah, you have more group of people over tonight? Uh, yeah, we had a uh, full house yesterday, not as many tonight. We ordered in last night. We're going to cook tonight. So yeah, it's, I kind of like this uh, weekend WrestleMania because the whole weekend, you know, of different people and fun and uh, doing this in between was kind of great too. I'm like, oh, cool. I get to see Tony in the middle of all this as well. So. <laughs> That's the downer side, sir. That's the well, talk side. talk wrestling, talk <laughs> cards, you know, a lot, a lot of stuff to chat about every month, you know, another uh, busy month that, that just passed. So should we get into uh, what's new and exciting in the wrestling world? Wrestling uh, card world? Absolutely. Let's do it. So uh, March releases, we had the last two from Tops. And of course, we have to say last in quotes now, obviously, because yes. you know, Tops is coming back in four or five years. And we don't need to get into the big announcement because you guys covered that very well last week. The big announcement that Fanatics is... Uh, doing business with WWE in the short term on their merchandising. And of course, eventually one would have to think that they're going to go back to tops when the need license expires. But anyways, the last two from the previous tops um, time, Finest and Women's Division, they came out. Um, let me say at the outset, I was able to put together a master set of both of them. And I think we both know the new set that's upon us now from Panini, that's not going to happen. So uh, anybody that wants to get your base and your chases and all that stuff and have a good shot at parallels and autographs from both. And I should say this, there's also the diamond, uh, not the diamond, but the die cut cards yep. uh, in both sets. You remember like they had the Stone Cold ones. Yep, there's, yep. A, there's an Undertaker one in the finest release and the... Uh, there's a diamond sort of one for the girls too. And they and, and they were gettable. I was able to get all of those. Like I say, um, on the sort of way out for tops, at least for the time being, I was happy that I was able to put that all together, knowing full well what's uh, in store around the corner. Um, and we also had a, a one indie that I put, I don't know if you uh, cataloged anymore, the NEWs, the Nation Extreme Wrestling Cards came out uh, yep. in January. Got that up there. Um, yeah, so so those were those were the uh, big releases, and of course the the biggest release, which is actually out as we speak. But I mean, a few what they call FOTL front and line boxes yep. are sort of out and in key people's hands is is the Prism Finest, and you know there's going to be a lot of talk about that. There has been already. There's been a lot of prognostications and speculation about what's going to happen and what it's going to mean to the hobby and prices. You and I had a very interesting discussion the other day when I called you and I said, "So where are we at now? About twelve hundred a box still?" And you said, "Yeah." Yep. And we just did some quick math in our heads just for the folks out there 144 cards in a case of prism it's it's 12 packs 12 cards per pack yeah so 144 at the current price of 1200 dollars a box and we suspect that that's going to go higher in the short term and then eventually settle down down afterwards that's about eight dollars and 30 cents a card which is insane, but it, it, it's, it's, it's what was anticipated, it was expected, and so yeah. chatted about ad infinitum, so it shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. It's, it's not really unlike the transcendent, but at the transcendent, as I mentioned to you, you can probably get that for less. Now, think about it logically. If you're paying eight bucks a card, there's 200 base sets, never mind inserts or anything else. 200 base sets, we're going to be talking four or five boxes at 1,200 bucks a shot to maybe put together the base set. So we're going to have to see as months unfold and what other configurations, like what happens on retail end, do they do like Upper Deck did with EPACs and all the other ways that product come to market, will we see a proliferation of these Panini cards that will somehow make a base set affordable? Now, you'd mentioned you were thinking that a $200 to $250 base set might be something that's possible. Yeah. Um, I don't like to speculate on these stuff because we're just giving opinions and 
It's possible, absolutely. Um, it seems unlikely at the outset. It doesn't seem that anybody, I spoke to my two main breakers and they laughed when we started talking about PRISM because they said, you know, it's, it's an entirely different ball game. Mm -hmm. We're not even sure if we're going to get our allocation. We're not even sure what we're paying for the allocation. And we certainly can't promise you a price, Paul, at this stage. And I said, yeah, I get it. I get it. The market, I, I, I put up my checklist, but that's it. There's no numbers and there probably won't be any numbers on price guide for PRISM for a bit because it's going to take a bit of, of, of time to settle. Um, and again, you guys covered it very well and you, and you went down sort of every which way that this thing can shake out. Um, and by and large, I'm outside with what you guys were saying. I mean, you know, I, I think saying that it might get people to jump the hobby might be a bit drastic, but certainly we master collectors and, and guys that like to buy a lot of, you know, super collectors and parallel collectors and things like that, uh, we're gonna have to temper our buying because it's just not gonna be possible, let alone affordable. Um, yeah, so that's Prism. Anything you want to add before we talk about the checklist? No, I, I, mean, I mean, I do think the base set, so <clears throat> my experience with that kind of stuff with high-end or more expensive type box pr uh, products, um, <coughs> excuse me, uh, and when I used to carry uh, some adult trading cards uh, back in the day, one of the uh, ones I called was a, a, a box called, uh, really called Juicy Honey, it came out of Japan, and I was one of the only guys in the lower 48 that was carrying that product, and I got it from a guy out of Hawaii that would send it to right. me, and I was paying, and then this is ridiculous prices back then, I was paying, uh, this was in 2005, six, seven, somewhere around that time frame. I was paying like uh, $135 a box, something like that, whatever it was. For, which would have been a lot back then, right? Which was a lot back then for, right. you know, uh, uh, adult trading cards, no less. Yeah. Um, but I couldn't sell the sets for 25 bucks for a base set. It took me about three to four boxes to make a set, a base right. set. <clears throat> um, and so they weren't, because nobody cared about that stuff. Nobody cared about the base sets at all all they cared about was the autographs the event worn stuff whatever that kind of you know kiss cards things like that um and i i tend to always think that's going to happen here as well i think that the base cards depending on if they're you're a super collector and you want to you know go after carrying cross or something like that whatever um you know you're still going to go after those kind of cards but like you said on, on average eight bucks a card well it's gonna be some cards are going to be a dollar and some cards are going to be tw 20 bucks sure you know um so yeah the average is still going to be about eight bucks but i still think that um in in a month or two, we're going to probably still see about one fifty to two hundred fifty dollars for a base set. For a, now, I was thinking that when we do our index, we'll probably add the panini as well to the upper deck, so we can track that as well, just to see how it's doing. Now, again, I'd love to see that. Depending depending on the brand, I mean, obviously, Prism is going to be different than the other panini brands that are out there. And sure. again, I'm not an experienced guy from UFC or from from uh, from racing, so I don't know all the different brands. But they they come in at different price points. And you and I last week were talking about Transcendent. Of course, when that came along, it's a premium product um, in a case. Um, and and the the base sets is kind of a similar phenomenon. I wasn't able to buy the base sets um, affordably. Now I've tried. And I usually bow out at about 500 bucks. And I think I went to 500 once and I've yet to get, there's been five or four series of Transcendent and I've yet yeah. to get a base set. And they're just, they're just cards unautographed in uh, of 50, but they're still floating higher than 500 bucks because I haven't been able to get them. Now, maybe one day they'll come down, but probably not because since 2016, 17 or whenever they started, they haven't done so yet. Um, so to your point, it's gonna be interesting to see. You're gonna see that the base set for the upper deck uh, AEW is already starting to come down while the hobby oh, yeah. box prices are staying the same. So to your point about base sets, it might have to do with the universe of the collectors, what the total end of people are out there. And if there's not a ton of us, then um, yeah, it's going to be something that it's well, not going to be Also because I think, I think the AEW release is a good indication of what we're going to expect from Prism anyways, because uh, the AEW set, it was expensive, even base sets, because all we have were hobby boxes. Right. Then, then we had the blasters. That, the lowered, that, that, that lowered the price even more. I put more product into the market. Yeah, exactly. And that's what's going to happen with Panini because Panini has so many different configurations of right. how this product is going to be released that in the end, we're going to have a lot of base cards out there. Yes, and, I, and it's remarkable. I mean, you know, like we've, we've talked many times about, we're going to get into this later when we talk about the shiny versus vintage discussion mm -hmm. and what's happening in the hobby with that schism that's going mm -hmm. on at the moment. But of course, you know, the, the printing processes that they use on, on, on these sets are what make them desirable, you know, the different colors and the different shininess and all, and all that stuff. And uh, I think there's over 6,400 different cards mm -hmm. when you apply all the different parallels. Like that's a shitload of cards for-, for It really is. You know, so to your point, maybe you might not be able to get all 200 base cards, but you might get a blue of one, a pink of another, a green of a third, a fuchsia. You know, you're not gonna get the blacks because they're the rare ones. But, you know, when I was- 
d sort of looking at the checklist, I couldn't believe how many different parallels. And then I remember that in your discussions, that's what you guys were highlighting, the fact that that's what PRISM is. PRISM really is. It's, it's not about the individual. Uh, yeah, when I, yeah, when I see people talk about like, man, and only two autographs per box, that's ridiculous. Like you're not buying this product for autographs. This is not what driving right. this product. product the marketing change to the shiny parallel stuff. That's what they yes. want, the tens and the and that stuff. Yep. Now, um, before we leave Prism alone, because I'm obviously, obviously we're gonna talk about that in subsequent episodes. I'm sure you're gonna be involved yep. with, with box breaks and the like. Um, what do you think of the product? Do you, do you like the actual cards? I think they look great. I think they look great. Yeah. And I think the checklist is amazing. I think it's probably- Yeah, the we'll talk, we're gonna talk about the checklist. I've, I've actually printed the checklist and we'll go through it. I I'm going to say this about the, the cards themselves, and it's not a negative thing, but um, I like them. Um, but one guy on Twitter made a mention of the fact that, at least on the base cards anyways, there was a white outline around all of the characters on, on the base cards. Yeah, so I, once you see it, you can't and, unsee and since, it. <laughs> and I can't unsee that now. Fuck. Every time I look at those cards, my eye goes to the white and traces around Brett, traces around Stone Cold. I'm like... Yeah, that's 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 not good, you know, for me anyways. But I'm not saying it looks bad. I'm just saying that uh, I wouldn't have thought that that'd be something that has happened. But yeah, I, I can't unsee the, the white around all those cards. <laughs> that is. I, I get you, man. But um, in, into the checklist, though, it, it is an impressive checklist. I mean, it's, it, it there's no denying that because it's probably one of the best checklists. It, it's got ever. variety. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, ever's a long time, but it, it, it's, it's, it's got, it's got a lot of new, a lot of old. Um, I've marked a few things. I'll sort of mark some of my notes and then we can chat about them back and forth. The, the, the biggest thing or not the biggest thing, but the, the, the buzz with that was that the rock was going to be in the yeah. set. And then the talk about what might happen with a rock high parallel or with sure. a rock relic, there are no relics, but yeah. you know, with an upper end rock card, I was a bit disappointed that the rock is only going to be a base card. Now, of course you can get the, parallel one of one black mm -hmm. and then that might set a record next week for the biggest wrestling card ever yeah. um, kind of a shame though that it's just a base card uh, i was thinking when they were talking rock we might see more um, you know heaven forbid maybe even a signed rock and i think that a signed rock modern today at a high parallel that's the one that's probably going to break that that glass ceiling but um you know, there's a bunch of insert sets, then they have their sensational signatures, and I won't go through the entire list. There's a lot of names there. Like you said at the outset, it's interesting because they have a lot of new names like A Kid and Amale and Von Wagner and, and people like that that you might not know, NXT UK guys, NXT guys. Um, in that first set, the one known I made was Paul Heyman. Uh, you know, that, that'd be one that I'd be interested in. Um, and there's quite a few, like there's there's got to be 60 autographs here. Then then they have the superstar auto, autograph set. And I believe uh, Braun Breaker's in that list. That would be his first autograph. Yeah. Right? So that that would be a pretty desirable card. No longer his first card, by the way, but still his first autograph. First autograph, right? Yeah. And then you get into the legendaries and you get your Kurt Angle in that and your Shawn Michaels and things like that. But where it really gets interesting for me is in this champion signature set. Because if you look at the roster there, Stone Cold, Roman, Undertaker, Charlotte, Shinsuke, Triple H, Piggy, Becky, Hulk Hogan, Damus, Damian Priest. And I'm wondering of those, if I had to say, um, what single card out of this set is going to be the one to break the bank? I'd have to say it's going to be one of those three, probably not even, I'm going to eliminate Triple H and Hulk Hogan, probably either, either the Stone Cold or the Taker. And I know a lot of people are thinking Taker, uh, you saw what happened this weekend. I mm -hmm. think he's going to be a big, big name until, uh, you know, long after we're gone. Yeah. So those are the two I suspect if you happen to pull an Austin or an Undertaker high parallel um, and then you go off and you do your grading thing, you know, now we're getting into where a modern card might uh, start to challenge some of those, you know, like uh, twenty, thirty thousand dollars cards that we've seen yep. in the past. Then, of course, the biggest thing of the set is the iconic rivals dual autographs. And there are some those are really nice. Yeah, and there's a whole bunch of them. I, I just highlighted a few just to give the folks out there that haven't looked at the checklist yet. You got a Goldberg Hulk Hogan. You got a Shawn Michaels Triple H. These are dual autographs. A Stone Cold Shawn Michaels. A Stone Cold uh, Bret Hitman Hart. And then what I think, again, is going to be the big card in the set, a Roman Reigns slash Undertaker. Because we've seen Roman. You know, we've seen mm -hmm. what's happened with him in the last month, month and a half. So his stock has steadily been on the rise. And again, Undertaker. So those were the highlights for me. But I know that people have been responding very positively to the checklist. I mean, God knows we're not going to get all these cards, but it's nice to know that they've been made. Yeah, they're beautiful. I think it's a beautiful checklist. It really is. There's, there's something there for everybody. Yeah, yeah, there really is something there for everybody. And I like I love that pairing. I love those dual ones. It's just, you know, some classic matches between those guys and you put them together. It's just, it's just a really good checklist. I'm interested in seeing some of those when they hit the market. Yeah. Now, uh, no relics, huh? Do you think that'll happen in the next set? Uh, I think they're going to be, I don't know about the next set, maybe. 
don't even know yeah. what the next set's coming up. I have no idea what the next set is. Yeah, I, I don't think, have they announced? No, they haven't announced the next not, opinion. Not that I'm aware of. I'm sure someone has an inside scoop. <laughs> yeah, somewhere. somewhere. And that's something, before we get off Panini and go to our normal uh, pricing stuff that we do every month, let's just quickly, again, you guys did a great job of wrapping it up, your second conversation where you talked about fanatics uh, mm -hmm. doing business with WWE. And one of the points made was, well, where was that leave Panini? You know, we're, we haven't even seen the first set yet, and they know the license is coming to an end. I firmly believe that they're going to squeeze as much juice out of this lemon, this WWE license as they can to suggest that maybe Panini might dog it because they know the license is coming to an end. I don't think so. I no. Think they're going to, I think they're going to try and make as much scratch off this as they can. And They've invested too much money into this. They yeah, double, they, I mean, they paid double what Topps did. Don't, don't, don't be half surprised. Again, speculation, you know, yeah, awesome. everyone's ass. don't be surprised four or five years from now if, if, if Fanatics owns Panini at that point. It's, it's very possible. Uh, we spoke many months ago about Michael Rubin and Fanatics and yeah. his way of doing business. And he is so far ahead of the curve when it comes to this stuff. It didn't surprise me, the announcement, because if you understand that the roots, what Fanatics is, they're a technology company and they can bring their skill sets to what the WWE already has, their shop zone, but more important, they're selling merchandise at live events. And that's where Fanatics excels. They're able to do customized jerseys. They're able to do economies of scale and, and ways of presenting this product to market. And that's what the, uh, the, the real uh, currency of that company is. So it doesn't surprise me. Trading cards, whilst it's important to us, it's probably not even on either of their minds. I mean, when Vince was shaking hands with Michael Rubin, and I, I doubt he was thinking, oh, fuck, I just did deal with, with Panini for trading cards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think anybody thought about that except for Panini and us. It's that's pretty much it. <laughs> it really is. Because I was, uh, I've had this conversation even with my wife talking about, you know, the card aspect. I go, the card aspect is like, the, the, as it is with every collectible, it, it, it's always the most minute, lowest common denominator. You know, thing. I mean, it just, it's, it only is important to, like you said, to people like us who collect and stuff like that. And, and we know, market. we know, we're, we know it's, we're nudging it forward. And before I forget, let me mention this to you, Brody, the kid who I know you're fond of, mm -hmm. uh, and I know you want to get on your show at one point, he had a, a Twitter poll um, that said, what's your number one uh, non-sport? And it was wrestling, uh, cars, UFC, and I can't remember what fourth one, and wrestling by far. Um, was was the number one. So this might be a time for you to reach out to him again and try and get him on because yeah. I think he's going to be keenly aware that there's a lot of wrestling people out there all of a sudden. I already have something I want to say to him. It's like that. When, when do you become, become, stop becoming Brody the kid and start becoming Brody the man? I don't know. When <laughs> do we stop becoming kids and become men? <laughs> when, when we when we grow up. That's that's true. Good point. <laughs> Good point. Uh, I guess we're done with the painting stuff. And, uh, what are we moving on to next, sir? Well, you know, at the outset, I was going to make a, um, another announcement about uh, our, our future and what we're doing. Yep. I can sort of squeeze that in now before we get into the pricing Let's stuff. Do it. Let's do I it. Know we, I know we lose some people when we get into the pricing and sometimes dry month after month going through these numbers. <laughs> but today, today's is a good one because we're going to be looking at, again, uh, uh, classic stuff versus shiny stuff. Yeah. Uh, both of them are right up there in terms of tops, and we're going to talk about what's going on in the hobby with both of those camps. But let's get to a bit of sort of news. Um, last month, we <laughs> made an announcement. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> there, 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 there's a new sound. Uh, yeah. we, made, we made the announcement. Obviously, everyone knows that Tony is uh, putting on his top rope con in September, and it's going to be amazing and massive. Um, and that we announced. Let, 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 me, let me go ahead right now because by the time this actually hits, yeah. I've already made the announcement. So that's uh, you know, you're going to. Uh, big announcement for us is that we're moving now from a one day show to a two day show. So now we're going exactly. to be September 16th and 17th. It'll be Friday. Friday the 16th. For, yep. So Friday be, for a few hours, like later in the afternoon. I, 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 we haven't set the times yet expected okay. somewhere between like, you know, three and eight, four and nine, something like that. Uh, but we're going to be having a, it's going to be a two day event where we'll have, we're going to have some guests who might be there both days. We're going to have some, we're going to be Friday only. Some will be Saturday only. And we'll be making all those kinds of announcements and, and, and notes up on the website at topropecon.com. And uh, so I haven't, uh, by the time this comes out, it'll already be a made announcement. So, uh, which is great because if some people were coming, if they couldn't make it on a Saturday for whatever reason, now you can come just for the Friday if you're local. Um, yeah. If you're coming in from far away, you know, you have the opportunity to hang out a little more. We're probably going to do a nice dinner on the uh, Friday night yep. and, you know, with us and, all that stuff. So uh, yeah, that's, that's big news that it's, it's not just a Saturday. And I think that that's, that's better just to give more exposure to everything. So yeah, it, 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 made, it made the most sense. And then uh, unfortunately the venue won't be available to us on that Saturday afternoon. So we couldn't do Saturday. I mean, Sunday so afternoon. Have, so we couldn't do Sunday. So, so we had to do it on Friday. So on um, Friday, and it's not unheard of to have shows that are, you know, evening types uh, yeah. afternoon, evening on Friday. So they do that here with the big sport card expo. They have a sort of, and even, you know, the, the, the big show, they have a, a early day, 
um, that you can come. It's like a preview kind of day. So a few hours would be great. Yep. And of course, we mentioned last month that uh, wrestling card uh, price guide and wrestling trading cards are going to be exhibiting there, uh, giving stuff out, talking to you about our websites and just sort of bringing people into the hobby. Yep. But speaking of card shows, that leads to our second announcement and something we've been alluding to for the last few months. And uh, we can sort of let the cat out of the bag now, but we're going to the national. Yes, we are. Uh, we're going to the National Card Convention, which is the biggest card show in North America uh, at the end of July in Atlantic City. Now, just to bring sort of everyone up to speed on what you and I have been up to with uh, WTC and Wrestling Card Price Guide, um, we were intending to exhibit at the show and we had been in touch with the organizers for some time. And the reality is, is that they're completely booked and they have been completely booked since two shows ago and they're moving to a smaller venue. They're so overbooked they're moving, at this point now is what it is. Yeah, they're they overbooked. are overbooked in fact, and they're dealing with the issue of how to let people go. So we were at the top of the list, believe it or not, or so I was led to believe for a table, but then we started to realize, well, you know, we're still going to go anyways, because we've got plenty of media stuff to do yeah. there. And I'm happy to announce and speaking with the uh, guy in charge of sponsorships that we will be doing a panel, a wrestling related panel during the national at the national um, that you and I will be hosting. Uh, we're going to have some other people within the hobby that are going to be joining us there. And we're going to be, it's going to be available to everybody who comes to the national. Um, we don't know. It's likely going to be on the Friday, but we don't know the exact time and all the details, but we'll get back to you with that hopefully by next month, if not the following. But uh, if you're thinking of coming to the National, you're a wrestling card uh, fan, you're into these things and you want to hang out with myself and Chuck and, and Tony, um, we'd love to have you come out and, uh, and meet us there. I, I've been once only to the National and it was fantastic. I, I had a great time. You know? so I, haven't, never, I hadn't been there since it was in Anaheim, probably in either 1999 or 2000, the last time the long Anaheim, time. Calif yeah, Anaheim, California. So and I was there because I was uh, I, I was working with some a, a talent there at the time. So I, I think it was Lori Petty, and she was signing autographs at uh, the uh, women's league ba baseball league. So the, the surviving members of the, of the women's league. So I guess it was kind of fun. And walking around, I was like, I had a great time, like being a kid in a candy store, man. It was just yeah. uh, it was so much fun going around. And now to actually kind of be going going back and uh, you know maybe you know, hopefully doing some kind of a panel out there and talking wrestling cards with other wrestling card collectors, it's going to be fun. Yeah, because there's gonna there's a lot of people that go to the national anyways that might have a peripheral interest in wrestling. We just want to make sure that we can come and say hi to you, you know, press your face a little bit. I mean, we're always out there on social media and you know who the main sort of group of us are. But uh, this year we want to spend a little more time getting to know everybody a little more and chatting in and person. Even though we weren't we weren't going to have a, a a booth like or a table like we had thought we we're going to try trying to get. So we're still going to be over time. We'll be making announcements like that about where we're going to coordinate to kind of all meet up and stuff like that. Yeah, lunches and like home. Maybe have a home base where we can all kind of meet, yep. and um, whether it be a different hotel or something yep. like that, we'll we'll find out. We'll figure it all out. So that's going to be a lot of fun, and it's Atlantic City, and it's the middle of summertime. Um, I went when the book came out back in 2010 because I just wanted to see all about that, and I sort of was trying to promote the price guide when it first came out. And I just went down there myself for a couple nights, and uh, I had a great time just tripping around, talking to people. I bought a few vintage wrestling cards at the show back then, and uh, it was in Baltimore then, and uh, it was just a good time. And I thought, yeah, oh, well, got to come to this again. So I'm glad I'm going to have that. <clears throat> it's a perfect time for us to go there anyway. So, and then for all of us who've all, only really met, you know, outside of Chuck's now, we met in person, but um, all of us meeting in person for the first time. Yeah. And hanging out and, and doing that. And like I say, there's, there's a, there's a lot of peripheral people that are in the hobby that are coming to the national and may have some interest in wrestling. Please do keep up with, and we'll tweet all this stuff out. Yep. And uh come and say, hi, the panel is going to be a very sort of general, hey, these are wrestling cards. We're not going to get into specifics because all that stuff is here in these videos, yep. but just to, just to meet each other and take yep. questions and, uh, you know, and with Prism coming out now, and of course with the AW Upper Deck license, it's an interesting time in the hobby and the hobby is growing. Um, I won't say exponentially, but at, at, at a good clip, you know, yep. so it's a good time to be a wrestling collector. So we're happy to be able to come and do these things in person. So once again, Top Rope Con, that's September 17th. And 16th and 17th. 16th and 17th now, correct, with yep. the new yep. date being added. And then the National is the last weekend uh, of July in Atlantic City. I'll see you twice. Okay, or twice in one year, I'll get to see you in person. No, you'll probably get to see me the week after Top Rope because you're coming up to Hamilton. For that's right. The, uh, that's right. I got right, uh, so, up at the Hamilton Comic Con the weekend after too, on the twenty fourth. Yeah, so it's only a half an hour drive for me, so I might come and uh, check in with you guys then. Yeah, yeah it'd be fun. Three well, times in one year, you'll be sick of we, me. We might, we might, yeah, yeah, yeah. We might, want, we might not be talking anymore by then. <laughs> <laughs> this could all be, this could all, this could all be blown up and over. By. 
<laughs> I don't think so, but you know, you never know. Okay, so what else <laughs> we got? We got uh, let's do the the top sales of the month last. Let's go to the index because I want to tie in the top sales of the month to new versus vintage and and that whole discussion that's sort of been brewing over the last few weeks. Okay, so let, if you don't mind, Tony, let's go to the uh, our, our index where we look at everything month after month. I'm on it. Uh, first thing I mentioned was the AEW Hobby Box. It was like a 250 in January, slightly down to 242 in February. And for March, no change. No change. No like, change. Like to, to the dollar, the same amount, 242 on average over nine sales. So that seems, you know, obviously it's consistent. Do you, do you think it's going to hold or slip a little more? I think it's going to hold. I think, I think we're at a level right now. I, I think that everything that's been, I mean, there's no other releases coming out for this particular release, right? There's no more... We've already got right, digital. We've got we've got we've yes. got blasters. We've got hobby. What's what else is coming out from them? He packs all that stuff. Yeah, that's, that's all it. Got. So I I think this is what we're going to see it at. But look at our base set. And this goes to our earlier discussion about Prism because remember when the base sets first came out and we can see that even here in January, uh, seventy six forty four. And if you recall, I said last month they were around seventy five bucks. Yeah. And then they came down to forty and or 49 so about 50 and we predicted and i said yeah around 35 to 40 bucks and take a look 34 yep. 33 so we're down to about 35 dollars which is fully half of what the base set was when it came out and that again has to do with the proliferation of cards over time over the blasters over the packs, all these other things that put more cards into the marketplace and that's going to yep. be the same thing in prism as well yep i'm sure if there's 6400 different cards there's a boatload of cards that have been printed and over time, all that shit's going to get out into the marketplace and it's going to proliferate. And that's how we're going to be able to get your $2 base cards, maybe even a 50 cent base card. Who knows? It all depends on how the things get collated and, and, and make it to market. Yeah, because I'm going to be 100% interested in just buying regular base sets when yeah. I can. That's yeah. what I'm looking because at. Because there's going to be a market for individual cards. Like, you know, like if you want your, if you want a Kurt base or if you want your Dexter base or if Dan sure. wants his carry in, although we might not be in this release, I don't think, but whatever the case, um, you know, uh, these would be valuable cards because it's not, they're not everywhere. They're not a dime a dozen yet. And I don't ever think they'll get to that. And, and that's the talk of, of you know, it, it's going to potentially squeeze some of the master people uh, out, out of the hobby. I don't think so. You know, we're just going to adjust like we adjust for everything. Like we adjust exactly. like we intended. You know, even Done Disputed was a bit of a change at the time, you know, and everyone talked doom and gloom with AEW. Oh, it's going to be way different because, you know, this is what Upper Deck's all about. And you know, we're already talking now about the second set and the first one's memory. So um, remember, guys, I say this a lot. These, everyone's a set. And I don't differentiate between an indie set or a prism set. And of course, this is big because it's the first Panini and it's prism and it's the first time prism's come to the hobby and they're going to bring a lot of people. But before you know it, we're going to be on to the next AEW. We're going to be on to the next uh, Panini release. Right? Yep. So, all right, so let's carry on. The Oh, so one thing I, I did was last month or two months ago, we started looking at the um, All-Stars Hulk Hogan raw but there aren't enough raw sales unfortunately it seems like if someone gets a hogan it gets graded that's the, the thing to do yep. so there was there wasn't really enough data to go on so then i said well let's let's look at sales and, and um, unless unless it was that you know the, those uh bootleg reprints those reprints those 50 dollar <laughs> reprints correct yes but i decided this month to look at um a complete set of of all stars raw raw and, and what do they go for and um Here's where we get some big numbers, 7,500 bucks, 7,700, 3,950, 1,300, which is a deal for that. That's yeah, a deal. Uh, you know, that's probably a throwaway number. That brings down the average. But anyways, I, I got the average of 5,390. So almost 5,500 bucks for a raw set of, the, is it 30 or 33? I think it's 30, 36 card set. 36 of the of, of the first all-star all set. And that, of course, is, is the one with the Hogan and the Andre, the, uh -huh. big, the big ones. So I'll try that again next month and see. You know, now we did this a while ago, if you recall, last year, and again, it wasn't to try and um, try and take down the all the the, the all stars. <laughs> I did that with the WCW autographs. I looked at that set of hundred, and we compared that to the uh, these, and we found that the WCW um, autograph cards were worth more. But people still consider the all stars to be the set in the hobby, so you know. It doesn't matter necessarily, but certainly if you look at the Wrestling All-Star Series B, that's about a five to $600 set. So it's a big difference that Series A to the rest of them. Of course. That's a comment I want to make, but yeah, if you didn't get them for 40 bucks, like we did way back in the day, you're paying 5,500 now. So not bad <laughs> for a set of 40 cards that came out in the 80s, right? And, you know, again, not meaning to stir anything, but, you know, comments like, that set is junk is is moronic you know obviously yeah. it's, it's an iconic set and uh, you know um 
they're worth fifty five hundred dollars, which is not junk in my book. Yeah, the nineteen eighty five Topps Hulk Hogan card um, that's that's been steady forty five, then forty, then forty five again. So I think we said last year for most of the year it was around a fifty dollar card. So if you have a raw eighty five OPG is probably more. The Scanlons is probably quite a bit more. But if you have a, a, a raw Hogan from the the eighty five set, so that's a fifty dollar card in mint condition, which is which is nice to see still. Yep. Yeah, that's holding steady, which is good. <clears throat> The uh, the Tony Vela Impel set oh, went down a little bit. It's twenty five fifty seven and twenty bucks. So I guess it's about the same as last month. So yeah. that's down. That's that's down to a twenty dollar set. I've kept right. the production levels kind of low on this one. Yeah, you haven't been cranking them up as much. I got them though. They're they're still they're still out there. Like I never have a problem coming up with. And if you look at the very last number, there's a set there that sold for a dollar fifty. <laughs> you know, I should have thrown that away. It's probably a mistake, but there it was. Someone. Paid a dollar fifty for the complete set, but <laughs> but that seems to be holding as a twenty to twenty five dollar set, you know. And you consider that for something that came out in ninety one, you'd expect it to be worth a little bit more. But I guess it's just because there's so many of them, you know. Yeah, I got. I mean, I've got these. Uh, I've, I've got deals with you know car wash stations and all kinds of places, <laughs> so you can find them anywhere. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, we joke that Tony actually is the guy that's been printing about to date in the storage room. Yeah. <laughs> operation. They're cranking out 91 impulses so that they never ever go away. They never and then go lastly, away. The, the, the marquee fleet set, the 2002 Royal Rumble with the four big rookies. We've been watching that for Climate. a year. Climate. Uh, yeah, we saw a bit of a climb. Now, I only had three sales and you had one of them go up to 300 bucks. So when you don't have the nine and you have a couple of sales that are bigger, that's going to skew it up. But that doesn't surprise me that it's trending up, you know, because the Cena rookie itself is easily a $200 card. So to get the other three, the Brock, the Batista and Randy uh, for two fifty eight, dollars that's pretty good. That is good. It you really know? is. I think that that's going to be a set. It's not going to be a $5,500 wrestling series A All-Stars, but it's going to be a set that from the Fleer era is always going to be sort of the benchmark we're going to look at and say, okay, where's, where's the Royal Rumble at? Do you think, do you think in 10... 20 years from now, that's like could be a thousand dollar set. Again, I, I hate to speculate about what might happen tomorrow because it's it's just the best guess. It's 10, but, 20 years from now, sir. I mean, I mean, who's gonna remember 10, 20 yes, years from now? Say, that Paul man told me, told me that it should be worth this right now. <laughs> yeah, you know, based on it, based on what it was, never mind 10 years ago, based on what it was two years ago, right? If it if it goes at a infinitesimal amount it's going to get there you know what i mean because we've gone from it being a 40 dollars set to a 250 dollars set in two years now does it go from a 250 to a thousand dollars set when it all these, when, when these four guys end up going and, and yeah. retiring yeah it may okay. do very well because cena still has his hollywood future in front of him right mm -hmm. batista is at the top of his game mm -hmm. Brock's going to win the title tonight, maybe, you know, so that we're talking about pretty, pretty uh, important people and Randy Orton, you know, so yeah. I, I don't see why not. I mean, this is going to be one of the sets that's always going to be a sort of bellwether set for the hobby. We're going to talk about the all-stars, right? And we're going to talk about Fleer Royal Rumble because mm -hmm. of that, that rookie class, I believe. I agree. And I, I, I do believe that this set in, in 10, 20 years could be a thousand dollar set. Sure. Sure. It really, it really can you know, be. If I we're mean, talking because... about a prism, if we're talking about a prism black rock, that might be a fifty thousand dollar card today. Then you got to wonder, right? Sure. You know. Absolutely. All right, sir. Now the next thing is our monthlies, where we look at the top sales of the month. And this is very interesting because I want to conclude when we look at this with a little. And this is a discussion you've had before, yeah. I think, on yeah. the Worlds Collide and, and also on, on these WTC shows. But I want to talk about, before we look at the prices, because the, 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 top, the top sales of the month are going to bear out this sort of discussion. And that's the sort of shiny refractor um, explosion that we've seen in the last little while mm -hmm. versus the vintage stuff and how there seems to be two camps coalescing around, hey, you know, uh, you know, this is the most important aspect of the hobby. And people saying, no, 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 no. You know, there, there's a new thing that's happening. And what I want to get out there and be very clear about is that, guys, these aren't mutually exclusive. I think it's fantastic that the shiny stuff is, 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 is uh, on a high now. Mm -hmm. And I think that the vintage stuff, when we say vintage, we mean the tops and wrestling all-stars and some of the Japanese and the home sure. and all flares, those cards, uh, you know, your ones, um, they're always going to be. In high demand that's never going to go that's never going to go away and they're they're going to affect each other 
uh, positively in both respects. So it's good for the hobby if new stuff. And when I say new stuff, you know, it's, it's predominantly parallel. It's predominantly gold and pink and shiny um, that guys are trying to get the of fives and of tens and of twenties. And we've seen a push on certain numbers and certain names, you know, mm -hmm. ones are doing very well. Um, you know, to suggest that this is where the hobby's at versus the all-stars or the other way around. I think that it's, it's, it's important as a group that, you know, you get guys that are um, very, very skilled collectors, you know, and have done very well in both realms, in, in the vintage and the new, but, you know, having differences of opinion. And it, it's, it's unfortunate to see because there should be a kind of mutual respect for each other because you both accomplished the, the same thing mm -hmm. in a hobby. And I think for the hobby to have the legs that we wanted to have, we need to let the world know how all encompassing it is going right back to the good wins, going to the Parker sets and the magic photos, and then really zeroing in on the Yamakatsus and the wrestling all-stars and the paper stuff from the seventies that, that, that sells. And the number one sale of last month wasn't the Roman Reigns refractor. The number one sale last month was the 1983 Andre the Giant Wrestling Annual. And that's one of those ones out of the magazine with the black border. Yep. You recall a year ago, I was kicking maybe more like, hey, these aren't cards. These are just pieces of paper from a magazine that someone's cut out and slapped, right? Well, someone slabbed one, sold one for $9,500. So Tony, there it is, it you is. know, like- The market will always there, there it is. That, you know, we had 15 grand a year previous on a Roman Reigns modern. And here we are on one of these wrestling annual PSA 10, you know, and that's pretty good to get a PSA 10 on anything that's hand cut, I imagine. Um, and that was our, our biggest sale of the month at, at 9,500. And then number two was the one of the, the finest super fractor. And for those that don't know the, uh, I just mentioned that came out this month, the 2021 finest. Um, the top card in that is the Roman Reigns super fractor one of one. Someone went to HGA. Um, obviously, because if they went to PSA, they wouldn't have it back yet, but uh, HGA uh, graded at 9.5, and that traded for 81.38. Now, that's a lot of money, guys. You know, that's, like, that, that's almost 10 grand, like $8,000 for one-on-one -on, -one on a card that came out a month ago, right? Um, and that leads to the discussion, well, is the most expensive wrestling card coming out of this new prison box or is it going to be one of those uh, wrestling all-stars? And I say, who cares, so long as it's one of them. Yeah. Right, you know, so long. <clears throat> let 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 the new stuff help bring up the old. Let the old help bolster bolster the new. And that's what I'm getting to. You know, the first one is an old Andre the Giant. The second one is is a Roman Reigns. What's number three? A Hulk Hogan wrestling all star at sixty eight hundred dollars. Right, and then number four, which isn't even on my list because it just happened yesterday, just under the wire, um, a 2014 gold refractor of the Rock traded for sixty six hundred. Right, again, old new old new so it's not like the vintage stuff is ruling the roost it's not like the new shiny stuff is ruling the roost they're both up there um getting big numbers which i think it, it speaks well for the hobby and the fact that we should all be holding hands and be jumping up together we should um, so this is yeah. the, this is the market we wanted as yeah a, as a collective group of people Correct. who collect wrestling cards this is the market that we wanted precisely <laughs> precisely this so, is so to have a uh, this division where it's like you know old versus new vintage versus chrome uh, it, it seems it, it's ridiculous. It really is. Yeah. So it, one is going to, as like you said, they're going to help at each other and compliment each other. 100%. And uh, this is exactly the, what we all wanted. We, we really want this and we want to continue to keep going forward yeah. in the same, same direction. Exactly. Um, I don't have a horse in this market because I have new, I have vintage, I have parallel, I, I have it all. So I'm just happy that if I'm not seeing a, a rise in the value of my collection here, I might see it over here. Sure. But, um, this, this notion of there being two camps um, is unsettling to me. There, there, yeah. There's no reason why um, guys were both in the wrestling hobby. And the fact that we're seeing big numbers on Roman Reigns super fractors is awesome for the entire hobby as a whole, as is the fact that we're seeing an Andre the Giant hand cut magazine card yep. going for almost 10 grand. Um, so yeah, so then we go back down after Hulk Hogan to another Roman Reigns Super Fractor. So this is the 2020 version. So the one from that just came out got 8138. The one that came out for 2020 got $6,200. And again, that might be the marquee card of that set, but still that's that's a good number. And as you alluded to, alluded to earlier, that $6,200 card could be a $15,000 card in a couple of years. You know, and, especially and, and, and we had the trickle down effect on a lot of these things too. Of so when people who yes. maybe couldn't get the one of one, now it's going to help the people who have like the number to five, the number to 10, right. the number to 20, whatever. I mean, it's just, um, it, it's, it's good. It's all good. It, it's all good. And then the next one you would expect back to vintage, a 1981 Hogan Poppy sold for $4,800. And I remember when these were first found on eBay, 
Bloody Bay, when we're first being discussed on Twitter, we were a little bit concerned that they might not be real, but I'm sure it's been verified. And at this number, it seems like a legitimate price. That that I seems think, like what I that card this, could be worth. I think this card even got graded recently by the same guy who bought it. It's like that. Did, did, it? He not, yeah. did he not get it autographed and then had it graded? I don't have one. Or was, of those that, or was that a different sale, I think? I don't recall. I tried to buy a Hogan Poppy a couple of years ago for like 800 bucks and I didn't get it. Um, you know, you can always count on Paul being the guy coming in second on these things. <laughs> You know, I'm a bit, never, never quite ready to pony up just enough, but um, that's good to see. And again, to our point, um, something vintage. So vintage, new, vintage, new, vintage, vintage on a, on a Ric Flair 82 All-Star PSA 8. Yep. And that's, that, that's 3,500 bucks. That's always going to be a $3,500 card in around there. If you get a PSA 10, it's going to go up to 10 grand or, or, or so. Way more. Uh, yeah. A 1982 Andre the Diant Wrestling All-Stars PSA 9, 3230. Which I thought was even a bit low for a that, nine. That is a pretty uh, bit low. Yeah, uh, a, a, a transcendent GPK sketch. Now we know those were specific ones that collectors were really after on these GPKs from Transcendent. Um, number number nine yeah. here on your list is the most shocking one to me. Yeah, a Shotzi Blackheart Chrome Superfractor from this year. So this is this is the one that the really ungraded, my view. Raw. The, yeah, ungraded, ungraded. Two grand, nineteen ninety nine. Now, is this a Shotzi Blackheart player collector? Or is this some someone just trying to get their hands on a superfractor of some sort? You know, could be. There are gonna there like we already know that the refractors and the X fractors and the parallels from the past heritage chromes and the original chromes are shooting up like mad. You got to imagine these superfractors and the one of ones. You know, because someone made the point. Well, you know, there's going to be a one of one Roman Reigns superfractor in how many different releases? And yeah, there's going to be a few of them. But you know, we're going to see them. We've already seen the one go to 15 grand. And that might have been a bit high. It might have been a little bit ahead of the curve for last month, sure. but it's all coming, right? You know, so that again speaks to, and then our last one is the Hogan Scanlon. And Scanlon is the uh, Australian or New Zealand version yeah. of the top uh, 85. Uh, 80 said 83, it should be 85. And that's 1985. And that was a PSA 10. Now that's pretty good because from what I understand, those Scanlons are very condition sensitive. Super hard. Just, just yeah. like the bubble gum cards out of New Zealand. I've got two that are good and one that's all beat up to rat shit. And I've never replaced them. I should have, uh, but they're just, they're just hard to find. Right. I'm actually, I was going through my set and I realized I'm missing two cards from my set. <laughs> from, from which ones? Uh, the from the New Zealand? Scanlon set, yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. So yeah, so we uh, so that 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 shows that right now you know we're still getting like our lowest our lowest card there is two grand you know and everything's mm -hmm. up. I think with Prism this month and a few key breaks, we're going to see a few higher numbers next month. We'll talk about that. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to do address this issue of of people getting into camps and saying, well, you've got to be buying the uh, wrestling all stars and you got to get them all signature and all this stuff. You know, collect what you like. Uh, you know, yeah. whether you think it may go down in value or not, you know, doesn't matter. You we're, we're in this for the fun of it all. The yeah. fact that the gold shiny stuff and the prism stuff is going to be real popular and it's going to get a lot of people from outside our hobby to come in and spend big bucks. Um, that's all good for we people that are in the hobby already to have collections behind us. You know. Yeah even if you have no intentions of selling. <laughs> no, no. And, 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 and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, I'm, I'm going to, you know, I don't want to stir the pot too much because, you know, I'm the first guy to say as a hobby, you know, I have great respect for everybody out there. I appreciate what everyone does, you know, but sometimes invariably someone might rub someone the wrong way. We don't intend to. Remember, it's very important that um, a lot of the stuff that we do for this hobby are opinions. And that's what we're here for, to give our opinion. We trust that, you know, you're watching us, so you want to hear what we think might happen. But remember, that, that that's all it is. You know, when we say this has come out and this is what something sold for, that's a fact. But when I say, here's what's going to happen with Prism, here's what's going to happen with Fanatics, you know, we're... I can say it's going to be A. And if it's not A, well, maybe it's B, which has nothing to do with A. And you know what? If it's not B, well, it could be C potentially. And then I've told you guys nothing. So, you know, the old saying about opinions and, and, and assholes, we've all got them, yeah. you know. So take everything with a, with a, with a grain of salt. Um, one thing you just mentioned about people that collect and don't get rid of, I've heard the word curmudgeon used, and I don't know if it sort of emanated with you guys, but a curmudgeon is a bad tempered person, especially an old one that never socializes and always angry. I don't know if that's the right way to describe a guy that's been collecting for 20 years and has chosen to hang on to his collection. You know, um, I've heard it mentioned that, you know, people that have been collecting for 20 years 
uh, ought not to be influencers or influencers are giving their opinion because what do they know? And it's like, well, hang on. A guy that's been collecting for 10 years, 15 years knows a lot, especially if he's been doing it live at the time. So these are all comments, but remember their opinions and not to be upset by what anyone says. I mean, I don't think anyone has bad intentions toward anybody. I think we all as a group respect each other. And I don't want to see this, this us versus them, which, you know, I, I've been sort of on the defense of this month about, are you a vintage guy? they're responsible for lifting the hobby and, and where we are today. No, it's this new push to shiny parallel and this new market that's been created. That's that's the reason why our hobby is on the upswing. Tell you what, guys, it's both. It is. And it, it's the hard efforts of guys at both ends. And particularly you guys, uh, you and Zan that are constantly talking about this stuff. There's going to be breaks on the prism. You're going to you're going to see this product ad infinitum like we did with the AEW. And uh, Take it all in, enjoy it, because it's 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 you know all good, man. It's at a time it's a time in our market in our industry that we've never seen before, and no. it's just it's it's again something that we've all wanted to see. You said it earlier. This is what we were after when we started a year ago. We said, you know, it'd be nice if we could do these shows and we can sort of spread the word about wrestling cards and put out some content out there and yeah. find other guys like us, which we've done. We've pulled in a whole bunch of different people that you've done a masterful job of finding out there that be that become part of our regular group. You yeah. know, that that hopefully we'll see at the national or we'll see in Tampa, you know, and we become friendly with each other. And I think that's important. I think yeah. that's important that as a group that, of course, as the hobby grows, as it becomes worth more money, as more people come in, invariably, there's going to be, you know, little bits of schisms between people and things sure. will get said inadvertently that might upset others. But remember, guys, we're all in this for fun one. I mean, I guess some people are specking or, or are investing. Well, and re regardless money. of what you're in the in this hobby for, whether you're in it for, for uh, monetary gains or whether you're in it because uh, you know you, you just love to collect, it. it doesn't matter because it's where we want the market to go. We're going in a yeah. positive direction. Values are right. going up. Interests are going up. Um, yes. You know, and, and so we're getting you know more eyeballs on on our on our little niche here, and our little niche is growing. It's not becoming a little niche anymore. It's becoming a sure. bigger niche, and uh, it's what we wanted. And so. When you start getting more people here, yeah, there's some divide a little bit, and uh, you know we don't want to see that. We we want everybody to you know, be happy and collect what you love. Yeah, and take everything with a grain of salt, guys. Please, if, yeah. if there's something that we say on this show that you don't uh, agree with, by all means, let us know. And and yep. uh, you know, use but, that comment we, section, sir. <laughs> yeah, send 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 comments, but. Um, you know, j j just remember, a lot of times people like to speculate, and that's all it is. And yeah. we're here to do that. But I just want to be clear that a lot of times you're going to hear stuff, and it might rub you the wrong way. And if it does, remember that we don't know shit. We really yeah. don't. None of us have a crystal ball. You know, if, if I knew what was going to happen tomorrow, I wouldn't be here right now talking to you. I'd be laying on a beach somewhere. You know, the first thing I'd be looking for tomorrow is not the value of a Roman rates card, but what the lottery numbers were. So, you know. <laughs> true. <laughs> Very that's, true. That's, you know that 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 that's the reality. You know, so uh, you know that's my message of the month. Uh, reserve a, reserve that cabana next to you for me, would you? Yeah, man. Enjoy in, enjoy the collecting and uh, come on, guys. Let's enjoy each other too because we all uh, we all do well for this hobby. That's right. You know? And I say it often. I'm I'm thankful to everybody that sort of come on board your show, that comes on Zan show, that that that, that tweets, um, that shows stuff on Twitter, you know, shows stuff on Instagram, Card Foundation, all these guys that have come into the world and spread good vibes and made it a better place. Agreed, 100% agree. Yeah. Well, speaking of that, sir, uh, we're gonna wrap it up here and say where everybody yeah. can find you. If they don't even know where you're at already, where can they find you? Someone who's watching for their very first time. Very first time, my name is Paul Anand. I have a site called The Wrestling Card Price Guide. Um, it's thewrestlingcardpriceguide.com on Twitter at Card Guide. And you, Tony? Uh, WrestlingTradingCards.com, everything is there. Miss it. Everything is there. Links, to your, pay, links love, to your site, links to people, people who are... Uh, love, love the pictures, by the way. Um, for those that don't know, I haven't been on to WDC in the last week or so. Uh, Chuck and Tony have uploaded a shitload of pictures, which is great. And oh, it's done more. the right way. It's not the way I do it, where here's everything, um, have a flip. If you want to see a particular guy, you want to see a Loomis from this set, you go, you click on the Dexter Loomis, and there's your shot. Um, not all there yet, but it's all coming. So It's growing yeah. every day, every single yeah. day. And this is a resource that, that, that Tony provides to us free. There wouldn't be a wrestling card price guide if Dave Porto and Tony Vela didn't create the wrestling card, wrestling trading cards back in the day for me to get from. Uh, and I've built from there and lots of other sites have built uh, for what you guys have created. It truly is the best wrestling resource out there. So use it, people. And uh, leave us some notes, man. Uh, comment. I'm, I, I'm engaging more lately with people who've been sending messages, which I'm really uh, kind of happy mm -hmm. about. 
yeah. some corrections here and there, some, you know, things that are, I don't know about. So I'll send them either to you or to Zan yeah. or somebody like that. But that's what the hobby is all about here to help educate yeah. each other. And that's what WTC We do the best we can. Is. But if you don't know and I don't know and Anthony doesn't know and Chuck doesn't know, um, it's probably not known. But <laughs> we'll find out. We'll, 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 we'll find out for you. We'll find out. So uh, with all that stuff, yeah, you know, like, subscribe, uh, share. It's, uh, it's all we want to do is share the knowledge that we know uh, with everybody out there. But uh, let's get more word out there. Get more and more yeah, people. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. And to everybody, thank you. And let's try and uh, let's try and get you out to the National in July and to Top Rope Con in uh, September. And see you then, guys. We're out. Do what you think is right. It's your